Ladies and gents, welcome back. It turns out what you know about catastrophic climate change and what the causes of it are may be wrong. We have many scientists stepping out of the woodworks and saying, hey, I think you got it wrong here. Let's set the record straight. We have a world-renowned ecologist and founder of Greenpeace. He since left Greenpeace writing this book because Greenpeace apparently got too political. Fake Invisible Catastrophes and Threats of Doom, fantastic book where he lays out a lot of the things you may know about climate change may actually be incorrect. Uh, fantastic read, very easy read. But we also hear, have here, led by a Norwegian Nobel Prize winner, 1,200 scientists sign the World Climate Declaration, which states there is no scientific basis for believing that there is a man-made basis for climate change. Now, before we get into this article, I wanted to point out, hey, well, Steven Spielberg has been going on about global warming, saying, I'm terrified, so terrified that he burnt $116,000 worth of fuel in his private jet since June. Since June, next film, Indiana Jones and the Climate Hypocrites Crusade. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, and a lot of people are reporting on this yesterday. Of course, uh, Steven Spielberg trending on Twitter. But here we have here Justin Trudeau to Steven Spielberg. Hold my beer because as a world known climate uh, alarmist and one who's implementing rules against farmers, the king of climate change on the move again with his giant motorcade. Uh, many, 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 many cars. He can't drive or travel alone. Well, I mean, when you threaten that many people's lives on a daily basis, it seems you have to have an entourage wherever you go. But here we go. True North reports back uh, at the beginning of August, Trudeau spent more time in the air in July than all of last summer. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spent all but 11 days last month abroad, Can Can Force One, and flew a total of 26,238 kilometers across 20 flights within Canada, according to the Nation's Post, Brian uh, Pasilflume. Trudeau spent more time in the air in June than all of last summer when he flew 26,000. 59 kilometers, which included a G7 and NATO summit abroad. Trudeau's public, anyway, he spent more time in the air, basically quadrupling, more than quadrupling, uh, going so much further beyond what people's uh, carbon footprint is supposed to be. These are the these are the leaders that tell us that we need to stop things. He's also may, coming down on the government. The government targets Canadian farmers by proposing cut of emissions on fertilizer by 30% by 2030. Meanwhile, again, like we say, do as I say, not as I do. But here we have it. 1,200 scientists and professionals declare there is no climate emergency. Now, we come this is this is coming from the people that are declaring that there is an emergency. They don't take it seriously as if there is an emergency. Now we have actual scientists saying, yeah, I think it's I think it's a big scam. The political <laughs> the political fiction that humans cause most of or all of climate change and the claim that science is behind the notion is settled in quotes has been dealt a savage blow by a publication of a World Climate Declaration signed by over 1,100, I guess by the time they published it, 1,200 scientists and professionals. There is no climate emergency, says the authors, who draw a f drawn from across the world and led by Norwegian physics Nobel Prize laureate professor Ivar Geiver. Sorry if I mispronounce that, uh, Mr. Professor. Climate, uh, climate science is said to have degenerated into a discussion based on beliefs and not sound self-critical science. The scale of the opposition uh, to modern day settled, in quotes, climate science is remarkable given how difficult it is, it is in academia to raise grants for any climate research that departs from the polit political orthodoxy. Full list of signatories is available here. I'll leave this article in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. 
Another lead author, another lead author of the declaration, Professor Richard Lindzen, has called the current climate narrative absurd, but acknowledged it, acknowledged that trillions of dollars and relentless propaganda from grant-dependent academics and agenda-driven journalists currently says it's not absurd. Particular ire in the WCD, the uh, World Climate Change Declaration, or sorry, World Climate Declaration, uh, is reserved for climate models. To believe in the outcome of a climate model is to believe that believe what the model makers have put in it. Climate models are now central to today's climate discussion, and the scientists see this as a problem. We should free ourselves from the naive belief in immature climate models, says WCD. In the future, or in future climate research, must give significantly more emphasis to empirical science. So in other words, they're saying that the, the models that they've been using to declare these climate emergencies, these climate, climate catastrophes, ha, are flawed. And they've been making inaccurate predictions. I mean, we, we all know that uh, the, the predictions of the past, where all of the uh, eastern seaboard was supposed to be underwater by 10 years, 20 years ago, did not come to fruition. But yet we're to believe that the models, we should still trust the models and we should still go based on these outdated models that don't don't actually accurately predict the future. If you can't accurately predict the past, we're not accurately predicting the future. This is, it, it, would, be, it would be insanity to believe that we could uh, do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Since emerging from the little ice age around 1850, the world has warmed significantly less than predicted by IPCC on the basis of modeled human influences. The gap between the real world and the modeled world tells us that we are far from understanding climate change, the WCD notes. The declaration is an event of enormous importance, although it will be ignored by the mainstream media, and that's why I'm putting it out here on this channel, because I tend to cover stories that get widely ignored by the mainstream media that are important to everyday people's lives. But it's not the first time distinguished scientists have petitioned for more realism in climate science. In Italy, the discoverer of nuclear antimatter, uh, sorry, I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing this, Emeritus Professor Antonio Zicicci recently led 48 local scientists professionals in stating that human responsibility for climate change is Unjustifi unjustifiably exaggerated and catastrophic predictions are not realistic. In their scientific view, natural variation explains a substantial part of global warming observed since 1850. Professor Zacchici has signed the WCD, the uh, World Climate Declaration. Declaration notes that the Earth's climate has varied for as long as the planet has existed with natural cold and warm periods. It is no surprise that we are experiencing a period of warming. It continues, climate models have many uh, shortcomings, it says. There are not remotely plausible as global policy tools. <laughs> the uh, They blow up the effect of the greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, but ignore many any beneficial effects. CO2 is not a pollutant, it says. It is essentially essential to all life on Earth. Photosynthesis is a blessing. More CO2 is beneficial for nature, greening the Earth. Additional CO2 in the air has promoted growth in global plant biomass. It's also good for agriculture, increasing the yield of crops worldwide. Interesting that um, there's an excerpt from this book here that I'm reading. Again, Fake Invisible Catastrophes and Threats of Doom. There's an excerpt where he talks specifically about CO2 and the fact that it is not a pollutant, carbon dioxide and the greening of the earth, and shows NASA photographs and actual studies that took place where they go over how plants fare so much better with more CO2 in the atmosphere than with uh, less CO2. In fact, a lot of these plants evolved at a time when 
when uh, the Earth's CO2 levels were much, 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 much higher. Um, there are records showing that the planet has had in excess of 4,000 parts per million. We are currently at 450, I believe, 480 parts per million. Uh, they're saying that is too much. But <laughs> what is too much is the question being raised here. Uh, what is the perfect uh, climate? The Earth has seen many, many climates. Uh, what is the perfect climate for the Earth? Is in question here. In addition to, in addition, the scientists declare that there is no statistical evidence that global warming is intensifying hurricanes, floods, droughts, or such like natural disasters, or making them more frequent, which is being claimed every time there's something. Every time there's a weather pattern in the news, <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard it. Uh, there's more forest fires. That's because of climate change. Oh, there, there's been a couple of storms this year. Oh, that's because of climate change. There's no climate emergency, the declaration goes on. We strongly oppose the harmful and unrealistic net zero CO2 policy proposed for 2050. It says, adding that the aim of global policy should be the prosperity for all by providing reliable and affordable energy at all times. In a prosperous society, men and women are well educated. Birth rates are low. People care about their environment, it concludes. The WCD is the latest sign that the settled fantasy surrounding climate science, climate change science is rapidly breaking down. Last year, Stephen Kuhn, an under an under secretary of science in the Obama administration, published a book titled Unsettled, in which he noted that the science is insufficient to make useful predictions about how the climate will change and over the coming decades, much less what our actions will be. He also noted that rigidly pr promulgating the idea that climate change is settled de demeans and chills the scientific enterprise regarding its progress in the important matters. Actually, that that's really true. To, to put this much emphasis on science when it fails, when it fails, People will not believe in science, period. And uh, not that you should believe in science, but people will not trust scientists in the future. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to destroy institutions because of political gains in the moment. The 2020 long-term green activist Michael Schellenberg wrote a book called Apocalypse Never, in which he said he believed that the conversation about climate change and environment had in the last few years spiraled out of control much of what people are told about the environment, including the climate, is wrong, he wrote. Of course, green extremists, academia, polit politics, and journalism will continue to argue that the, for the com command and control they crave through net zero policy, in the end, their, rap their warped view of the scientific process will fade, leaving a trail of ludicrous Armageddon forecasts and yet more failed experiments in hard left econo economic and social societal control. Amazing, amazing article here. But hey, let's leave it up to you guys in the comment section down below. What do you think on this subject? Do you think that these 1,200 scientists, actually academic, tr academically trained for climate science, are they are they off on a loop? Are they on a tangent? Do we have you know people from the forestries industry who have uh, inst been instrumental in changing uh, the practices in the forestry industry and make things better? Uh, Patrick Moore was instrumental in stopping uh, nuclear testing in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, then since left Greenpeace because they became a um, eco-terror organization, a political organization uh, using terrorist tactics. He wanted to make changes, not fear. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what do you think of this whole farce. Uh, they're coming after our farmers here in Canada and around the world at the moment under the auspices of this climate fear. We'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video. Keep on trucking.